Bithorn signed the copyright manifest, created the idea of socialist system of supporting of authors, created the anthem of Europe and was a co-author of symphonies created by robots. Hi, this is Copycast by Claims, we are talking about intellectual property and related stuff. Here are me, Viktor Gorsky Machalov and Anton Indrusiak. Uh, we are intellectual property lawyers who share cool stories between court hearings. Enjoy! And today we're talking about Beethoven. He is a very old guy. He created many famous masterpieces. And how old is he? He was. Uh, because he died almost 200 years ago. So good news! We can now download his music from internet and use it in our commercials. No, well, yes, <laughs> but, well, it depends. You sound like a lawyer. Sorry, but you really should be careful, because, yes, Beethoven died a long time ago, so his works are in public domain. However, Everyone who creates any performance of any of uh, Beethoven's works or creates something based on Beethoven's works has exclusive rights to uh, these creations. That's why it's very likely that recordings of Beethoven's works uh, that you download from the internet are protected by copyright and the rights belong to some musicians who are quite alive. All right, all right. When well, I'll find the recordings which were made a very long time ago and which entered the public domain. Too satisfied? It depends. Do you know that Beethoven was so great that the final part of his Ninth Symphony, uh, also known as Ode to Joy, became the anthem of the European Union? And even more interesting is that the Ninth Symphony lasts uh, 74 minutes and a CD as we know it, or as we knew it, is 74 minutes long. Do you see any connection? So do you mean that the volume of a CD disc was specially created to exactly match the length of a Ninth Symphony? But why? That's right! Uh, who loved that symphony so much? I don't know, and history is silent about that. Either Sony and Philips, who were CD development companies, or the wife of Sony chairman Akito Morita. In fact, it doesn't matter. The main thing is that the Ninth Symphony is so brilliant and significant that it became the basis for such an important invention as CD. It's amazing how Beethoven, who you know, most likely never even thought about computer technologies, contributed to its development. Now, attention to all who believe in supernatural. Despite the Ninth Symphony is great and so on, there is the curse of the Ninth. According to it, the composer is destined to die while writing or after writing Ninth Symphony, or before completing a Tenth Symphony. Mm, did this happen not only with Beethoven? Yes, for example, Malcolm Arnold, Kurt Utterberg, Anton Bruckner, David Maslanka, and others. It is not so bad. Uh, actually, you may not write the Ninth Symphony and not die and live forever. Or if you think that it's time for you to pass, you just can simply write the Ninth Symphony and die. It's great. Okay, uh, let's be serious. The curse of the Ninth is more of a coincidence and a tale than a truth. 
of course. Uh, all the composers were no longer young at the time of writing of Ninth Symphony, and uh, it's more likely that it's the old age fault than they are dead, but not the Ninth Symphony. Anyway, uh, let's hope that there is no the curse of the Ninth Copycast. Beethoven's important contribution to copyright was that he and other great composers signed a manifest addressed to the parliament demanding the adoption of copyright laws. At those times, the first half of the 19th century, in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom, in France, copyright was developing already. The first laws were appearing. Everything was moving towards the adoption of the Paris and Bern conventions. Composers from Germany felt that they were deprived of the opportunity to protect their copyrights. The manifest did not immediately give its results, but it marked the beginning of a movement towards the protection of authors and granting them rights. Later, the first copyright law appeared in Prussia uh, in 1837. For Beethoven, as well as for other creative folks, it was important to have an opportunity to create without worrying about uh, the difficulties of life. So Beethoven tried to earn his living by creating musical works. Uh, let's assume it wasn't easy, because nothing in those days prevented music publishing companies from hiring a gifted musician who would play other people's notes. Uh, and in general, the offers were not legally protected. Uh, and Beethoven was quite close to the German composer Franz Anton Hofmeister. Uh, and in one of his letters to Hofmeister, Beethoven complained uh, that negotiating finances and selling musical composition is a very tiresome business. Uh, Beethoven wrote that in an ideal world, everything should be different. He wrote, <clears throat> I wish things were different in the world. There just ought to be in the world a storehouse of art, or in German, ein Magazin der Kunst, uh, to which the artist would only bring his artworks in order to take what he needed, as it is one must be half businessman. And how can one be reconciled to that? At the same time, uh, we do know for sure that Beethoven did not mean here the publishing business or the publishing houses were called magazine. Uh, it's clear from the context of the letter and socio-political ideas of Beethoven that he meant something else uh, that did not exist at that time. The ideal, the image of which was created in his hand. Actually, Beethoven was proposing to exchange the result of creative activity for, you know, food and related stuff. Uh, this looks like a socialist idea. You give what you can and take what you need. Uh, and if copyright has not followed the path of more capitalistic development in the form of uh, in which it exists now, you know, when we establish strict prohibitions uh, for use and license the possibility of such use uh, of intellectual property and take money for that. Uh, but if copyright chose the socialistic path uh, when all objects immediately pass into the public domain and creators could ask the state or society to give them money back for their creations, the exclusive right in copyright world would never have appeared. Actually, in the modern world we have a model in which someone does something as creator and get paid for it. Uh, the so-called grant system, in which a government supports the creative activity of authors. And in this case, the author usually does not claim copyright uh, as it is transferred uh, to the government. Conceptually, the approach in which society financially supports authors who put their work in a kind of common pot has the right to exist, of course. However, there is a hardly possibility in the system now that allows us to discard copyright and support offers like that. 
the current economic, social and political regimes do not allow us to achieve this model. And today, uh, copyright is a real, strong and valid, if not to say here the only one, uh, way to support offers and ensure their rights. In 2021, artificial intelligence completed Beethoven's 10th symphony, which Beethoven began to write after completing the 9th symphony. Unfortunately, his death did not allow him to complete the 10th symphony and only some musical sketches have reached us. Quite a long time since the last drop, you know. Or... Yes, nice to hear again, dear Beethoven. Well, <laughs> attempts have already been made to finish the 10th symphony. For example, Barry Cooper, an expert on Beethoven's work, tried to do this uh, based on the previous uh, symphonies and sketches, uh, but these sketches were so few that nothing ever came of it. A little later, a group of enthusiastic musicians and experts in machine learning uh, gathered to finish uh, the 10th symphony. The musicians created a composition based on the musical works uh, that Beethoven wrote during his lifetime, and the artificial intelligence generated the new work in the style of Beethoven. And this uh, raises the question, who owned the copyrights to the result which was created by artificial intelligence? No, I guess you know the answer if you uh, heard our last episode. Uh, nobody knows? Almost so. Actually, it depends on the legislation of a country, of course. Uh, in some countries, the right will not belong to anyone at all, uh, since there is no creative activity in generating musical composition by AI. Uh, and Beethoven's sketches themselves are no longer protected, because uh, they entered of the public domain a long time ago, and the pieces created by the musicians now are protected by themselves separately from the final 10th symphony. In general, everything is debatable. Mm, of course. Victor, have you ever wondered if it's legal to publish the 10th symphony with the name of Beethoven? Why not? Because this can be considered as a violation of the moral rights of Beethoven, of course. Uh, I mean, if I didn't write something, you cannot say that I did it. Mm, okay, I agree with you. Indeed. Uh, how ethical and legal is it to assign Beethoven's name to a set of sounds, even if it is talented one and similar to the previous Beethoven's work, uh, if he himself did not participate in this. Uh, well, everything unfair is illegal. Such a deep idea of law. That's how smoothly we moved from intellectual property law to the philosophy of law. By the way, uh, if I were the heir of a great composer, I would not feel good about that. They will write some nonsense and everyone will think that Beethoven composed some classical music with, you know, deep basses. So, let's conclude our story about Beethoven. It turned out that he was a great composer. He cared about the rights and interests of authors in the whole world, and he put forward his ideas on what mechanisms should be introduced to protect authors. In general, a great man is great in everything. And uh, we hope you enjoyed our discussion. Uh, and please write your comments uh, about what you think about Beethoven's magazine Der Kunst. Follow us on any podcast services like Spotify, Deezer, Amazon and so on. Uh, follow our YouTube channel Copyrighted Dreams. Uh, read our posts. Uh, ciao! Ciao!